All right, let's finish this comic. Okay, let's finish a page. Well, let's finish one panel. This panel is 90% feet. And I'm bad at feet, like most people. So I've gotten a bunch of references. I also went online and dug up as many different ways of drawing feet as I could find. See if I can steal some stuff from other artists who are better than me. For those curious, I'll be drawing an Autodesk Sketchbook Pro, which I can't get away from because it feels so good. To track my references, I'm going to use Pure Ref, which is a slim freeware program, and XNView, also freeware. This is our full page. It features a new character who I will refer to as 16. This is where we are. Scene 1, book 2, page 2 of We Are No One, which you can read at yourfacespretty.com. Okay, let's go fishing for a new way to sketch feet. Back in the day, I learned how to draw feet from the DC Comics book of drawing... Uh, sketching the pencil in the comics. Yeah, it's about penciling. This is how I learned to draw feet, and I haven't really updated my technique in a while. I really thought that once I started looking, I'd find two or three main ways of mapping out what a foot looks like. But I actually didn't find that many discrete methods. Most people draw feet by just kind of drawing feet. They don't actually have a step-by-step -step way that they do it or can explain it. But that doesn't mean that there aren't things to be learned from them, so I picked out a few that had the most structured methods in a few different styles, and I tried them on. This is by an artist called Gavotte. I'll link them down in the doobly-doo. They have a variety of tutorials online, which I did none of them. Full disclosure, I did not follow any tutorials. I just looked at people's pictures and stole their line work. Uh, I'm secretly 12, and I hate being told what to do, I guess. If you're wondering why my page is flashing blue, it's because I'm setting down a fill layer to lighten my sketch layers so I can sketch over them. I really liked the way Kavat organized the ankles. This little ball in a slot thing felt really good. Toes had much harder time with toes. I did like this little V-shape, kind of like a sandal pointing down between the big toe and the middle toe. But this shape wasn't present in every picture that Gavat did, and I wasn't entirely sure how it integrated with the three-chunk system. It wasn't working for me very well, so it took me a few tries to get the toes where I wanted them, and it felt more like I was pushing the model to match what I was already seeing, rather than getting the model to inform my decisions. And that's really what I'm after. I, I need a new framework that will help support my extreme lack of anatomical knowledge. I mean, I need to learn my anatomy too, don't get me wrong, but a good framework can help support you when you can't picture what you've got to draw. It took almost 10 years to figure out how to map a face. I experimented with so many weird lines, so many different ways of drawing weird robot lines all over people's faces to track where the eyes go and stuff. It's hard and everybody's got their own way of doing it. If you'd like to check out Gavotte's tutorial and not my weird hacky take on it, the uh, link is in the doobly-doo. When picking out the next method to try, I wanted to find something that had more to say about where the toes go. There's a lot of methods that have stuff to say about where the foot bends, but that's not actually where I have trouble. It's like, how long are the toes? Where are toes? What are toes? I don't know. Toes are hard. Interesting, some people are perfectly happy to just throw down a couple circles and go for it. They must have a better understanding of feet than I do. 
This would not fly. I end up with wormy bobs if I do that. So I decided to do something a bit odd for my next try. I wanted something more structured and more grounded in anatomy, and so I decided to try and draw using a sculptor's reference. And this was obviously never going to work. The things that a sculptor needs from uh, a, like a base form is very, very different from what you need if you're drawing. Part of the reason one sketches things out is to make sure you end up with a sense of volume. Sculptors don't have that problem. They have the volume. It's a process of removal. So as a result, me trying to frame this out like it's a sculpture, I end up with a lot more lines than I need. And while it's really interesting and really nice to look at all of the, the forms like this, trying to ink over this would be an absolute nightmare. There's just too much going on. That said, I learned a ton following these shapes. They are grounded in anatomy, which is why it's called anatomyforsculptors.com. You should check it out, link below. Lots of good information on there. One thing that doesn't get said enough is that uh, the way you sketch out a picture is, there's not a right way to do it, but there is going to be a way that gives you a look that you like. Framing something entirely in circles and cylinders is going to give your art a very particular look. It's probably going to look a little bit noodly, because you built it out of noodles. I have a tendency to use a lot of curved lines in my sketches, and it makes it difficult for me to keep my proportions straight. But on the other hand, I like the gestures that it creates. I like the fluidity. More than just the shapes. There are actually a few different ways to use sketches. There's reproduction. You can take an image that already exists, measure it out, put it on another page. There's a way of drawing from your imagination that's very similar. If you have a strong image in your head, you can project it onto the page and basically just trace over it. But for this to work, you need to have a very strong image. I was going to follow this person's model, but then once I really started looking at it, I had no idea where they were getting these forms from. Is... is that central lump fat? Do bones stick up there? Is that place where the two lumps meet, is that where it folds? I don't know, I didn't get it. Just goes to show, nobody really knows how feet are built. Except for Proko. This... this guy. This is the go-to if you actually want to learn your art anatomy right now. I haven't found anybody else who's doing what he's doing so I saved him for last. Proko's method unites gesture and form into one mega form. <laughs> I had no trouble placing the toes. They just flowed off the shape of the rest of the leg. Just dripped off there. Juicy toes super grounded in reality and anatomy and it's just great except for the part where i still don't actually know my anatomy go check out proko proko is great so here we go we got four sketches and i was thinking to myself i don't want to pick between these i want to know how all these turn out i'll just ink all of them That'll be cool, right? And then we can compare them. We can see, like, how they each look as finished products. It'll be cool. It'll be fun. But to do that, we should probably do it the way that I do it, with the weird duckbill thing that I learned from the DC Comics books in high school. We'll just throw that down real quick. Then everybody will be able to see how weird my old technique is and what bizarre shapes it makes. I don't mean to be disparaging on the DC Comics book that was actually really good. It was just extremely beginner level, and I should have studied more. And then Sketchbook crashed. <laughs> yeah. So the heck with that. Let's just move on and finish this darn comic. I mean, this page. I mean, this panel. First we gotta draw ourselves a chair. Gotta figure out what the deal is with this chair. What did this chair look like? Let's look at some other pages get a pretty good look 
at all of its bits as Sixteen takes it apart. It's an old chair, but not ancient. It shouldn't be easy to take apart. Just a little knackered. Started out with one point perspective, and I was like, hmm, this isn't working for me. Two point perspective. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, no, it's three point perspective. And then after a little bit of that, I drew it all by hand, which somehow did not come back to bite me. It did give me a little bit more wiggle room. Not having a rigid framework sometimes means that you can insert a little bit more character, and character is what this chair needs. I'm kind of picturing this old office chair that my dad used to have in his chiropractic's office. It had the stuffing kind of coming out, but the stuffing had been like flattened. The chair is like 15 years old. Oh, hello, small child. I forgot that was in this song. It's not a chair that's actively falling apart. At least, not the beginning of the scene. It's a good chair. I mean, a little thin around the ankles. Not the most comfortable, but a good chair. One of the things I realized sketching this out four times is that I don't actually like the pose very much. It's really vertical and stationary, and in the next frame she's leaning over. It doesn't make any sense at all. So I decided to take what I learned and rebuild the frame entirely. You can see some of the stuff that I learned. Look, you can see Gavot's ankles in there. You can see the way that I mark the, uh, boy, I don't know what to call it, right above where the toes the toe bones connect to the long toe bones. We got a bit that happened in the uh, anatomy for sculptors uh, model. I learned a little bit of leg anatomy, so the way that I'm handling my leg bone is a lot better. Heck, you can tell that the, the whole leg is shortened slightly. Haha, -ha. yeah, I didn't learn enough about knees. I had to go look up my knee business again. These are really weird and lumpy, and I couldn't remember which part of those were bones, and which part was cartilage, and where the lump should go. This is all technically supposed to be behind word bubbles, but I'm looking into it anyway. I decided this was just a practice frame. If I do this now, then all the frames in the future will be much easier. Ah, to not have to worry about feet. I love how polarizing feet are. There are like two kinds of people in the world. There are people who pay so little attention to feet that they can draw like three blobs stuck together with some little uh, baby sausages stuck on and they're like, yep, that looks exactly like a foot. And then there are people who are just obsessed with looking at feet. And uh, hello, welcome to my comment section. I'm sure you clicked on this thumbnail uh, for a very specific reason. I hope you're enjoying yourself. Oh, I hate that second gesture line on the left foot. I kind of, uh, I felt obliged to make it mirror the other leg. And by mirror, I mean not mirror at all. Just be exactly the same. I'm not sure why I did that. You can see, or maybe you can't. You can see what the line should be, and it is a nice uh, downward swooping curve, just a single curve straight down to the ground. And uh, yeah, once I gave in and started following the curve that I had initially set down, not this bizarre S curve that was completely meaningless, I had a much easier time. You might notice that I drew it zoomed out and that was, uh, so I could visualize the proportions of things. Once I had everything penciled, I zoomed in and started inking, which is just magical. I didn't think very much of this pencil, but I think this is a pretty darn good ink. I think my feet have really improved. That was only really a few hours of study. I don't know why I do, don't do this more often. Oh wait, I do. It's just that I have to study everything. 
Hmm. I am cheating a little bit on 16's legs. I know that I can't get my leg anatomy just so, so we're going to be doing it a bit stylized. This is giving away secrets. So when I don't know what I'm doing, I will emphasize gesture over uh, everything else. You'll see me use big swooping lines, you'll see me use extra sparkly, and that's how you know that I don't know what I'm doing. Ooh. Or you'll see my lines get real scrubby while I work really hard to try and fish out where they're supposed to be. Or you'll see my shading get really intense. Sometimes you'll see me do that too. Oh, speaking of, it's time to start shading. Picked out a nice red for the chair. Now I'm grabbing the colors of the light from the other page. And I'm making a little reference sphere that has the lighting that I want on it. I'm gonna cover the floor in my standard military brown. And then we're gonna touch it up with some of Jessie's colors, some of the purples some of the prison oranges. Just kind of mix that in there. The 16 is, uh, she sees the world in a more interesting way than the other characters do. So if I'm drawing in her perspective, there is going to be uh, some levity in my colors that isn't present otherwise. Shadows are darker, closer to the base of objects. This lighting is semi-realistic. I'm blobbing it on a little bit, very soft. Uh, and that is so it takes less time. Because I have spent a lot of time on this for a single panel. It's very naughty of me. So I'm getting a bit impressionistic, impressionistic, like I said I was gonna with the legs, I'm fussing around with these uh, dirty splotches, figuring out what I want from that. In the past they've been brown uh, dirt, but I think given the color of the floor, this would be a kind of place where you'd get black dirt, kind that just like turns the bottom of your foot just pitch black. I think the way that I handled toes shifted slightly specifically from working off of that anatomy for sculptors reference. They feel a lot more like clay. They feel like bendy clay. Kind of thick. Now we're gonna add the little bits of wood that are falling down off the top of this chair. All scattered across the ground. She flicks them down. Yeah. Do this in two layers. Excuse me, three layers. Okay, one one layer for ink, one layer for color, and then underneath that we got a multiply layer with a little bit of purple for the shadow. We gotta handle these falling bits, and I struggled a little bit to make them seem like they were falling and not that like spaghetti was dripping out of the word bubbles. The secret was uh, to make one landing on the ground and bouncing. And the last step is, as always, to pump up my highlights because, as usual, I have been a little bit too conservative with my value range. Especially for print, which I do need to worry about now, since I'm somebody who publishes books in the real world. And then the last thing that I did was remember that this is the left-hand page, which means that I'm gonna want the text on this page uh, to skew a little bit left so it doesn't get eaten by the fold in the book. And there we have it, the finished frame. Not the finished comic, that'll take six years. If you want to join me next time, instead of going the long way around and studying anatomy and taking way too long, we'll do a real fast. We'll look at how to cheat the heck out of a panel and use 3D modeling to cut corners. Cheers!